Now the last part of this series will be considering texture animation inside of Blender. But first I want to thank you for viewing this series and really showing support and interest in this matter. Consider liking and subscribing if you want to yes, be part of the community in the future and to show your support. So I really be able to measure if it's really necessary for me to invest future work into this topic. Also the, the 3D animation part will be another different topic uh, no, on another level, definitely will involve a lot of different things, but that's not really comparable to the 2, uh, 2D animation stuff. So yeah, would be very useful to know if people really want to know about that. Also, if you liked what you have seen, consider taking a look at my buymeacoffee.com. There you can support me directly without YouTube in the middle something and you can take part in different things like a monthly subscription or different other things like extras for streaming because it's practically impossible to stream AI stuff regarding image generation on YouTube even if I want it or not, there are bound to be subjects which occur, which instantly going to ban my account without much of me doing about it. So that's not an option. I need to work out something so I can really stream something like that. And also another idea I had would be a funding for a ChatGPT subscription regarding uh, the use in Blender so I can actively try and work something out with the help of ChatGPT and see what's possible and even stream it while maybe even taking community suggestions towards coding or fronting ChatGPT. So now let's have a look at text animation. First, we are going to add a plane and we are going to scale this plane for better visibility. Place it and first of all, very important, we are going to unwrap the UV map of this plane in order to animate it. So we have done this. We are going to switch to the shader editor and we are going to add a material to the plane. So now we are going to remove this principled BSDF shader and add a simple emission shader for the sake of simplicity. Just because we don't need to consider something like lighting or some stuff like that, only to see it working. And now we are going to need the input from the UV map we unwrapped. We're going to choose the UV map and we are going to convert it with a mapping node. Connect this and now we are going to use these values which are respective points on the UV map, for example for the, the location, and we are going to animate them. So now finally we are going to add a texture which we are going to be animating. I'm going to choose a simple noise texture and it's an automatically 
automatically generate a texture inside of Blender. So it's automatically seamless. If you want to use your own textures, you need to be certain it's seamless. Otherwise, it won't be much use, at least not location wise. Now we are going to use our mapping node in order to influence the generated texture. And the generated texture is going to the color of our emission shader. So now we are going to see how it's going to look. First, we are going to alter the scale. As you can see, it's moving. It's overall bigger. Since we are got this down, we are switching to the first frame of our animation. And again, we are going to insert keyframes for the location value. Now we are going to the end of our animation, frame 300. And again, we are going to set the desired value, for example, 10 meters and insert the respective keyframes. So now, when we play this, it's going to do exactly that. It's going to switch the value till it's, it's at the end of 10 meters. You can also animate the other values and even go in and layer many different values above each other and animate them in other ways can maybe use and yeah as you can see it's very powerful and very versatile if you know what you're doing now we animated this plane we can maybe go in and for example put it in the background and scale it or a somewhat fog effect in the background and position it accordingly so it's even position of the camera boundaries as you can see and now we are looking